Hi, everyone. Um, yes, this will be recorded. Uh, I'm Leslie Rogowski, and I'm here with Nate, who you just heard, and my partner in crime for the Beavesmith, Leslie Pope. We are called Team Leslie, and uh, <clears throat> it's just so nice to have someone completely of the same mind that I work with. So here's how this works today. This is not a do along or a not along as the case may be. This is presenting a macrame project and you can, <clears throat> I'm gonna demo through it and refer to the instructions that you can download as a PDF. At the top of the chat window is a link for the PDF if you have not already done so. And please type in questions into the chat window as we go along. And Leslie Pope will take a look and if there's things that she wants me to stop and go back to, I'll try to get to that. But we will try to get to everything we can. So stick around, watch the tutorial, um, watch my demo. And then later at your leisure, you can go back and find this on the michaels.com YouTube channel and look for the Macrame 501 Waves Bracelet. And you'll be able to watch this all again and follow along then by stopping and doing things at your convenience. So, all right. So I see people from all over. Uh, this is so cool. Thank you for joining me for my class. And I think we want to get to my bead mat now. There we go. This is the tutorial that you'll be able to download. It has nice pictures of uh, the finished piece. And as you can see in this, there are photo illustrations. So you'll really get up close to be able to follow along on your own as we do this. So the materials that are needed for this First and foremost is gonna be the Beadsmith mini macrame board. This is a very lightweight foam board. You get to stick pins in it to hold your work. Um, but for today, oh, you can see there's this great grid on it, which does help you to align things when you're knotting. For today's class, for the workshop, I'm gonna work on the blank side, the, the reverse side, so you can really see what I'm doing. Let me get my stuff set up here. Uh, so you need the macrame board. You want to look for the knotted waxed Brazilian cord at Michael's in the shops and online. They come on cards in wonderful coordinated colors. So I chose the neutral colors to give you kind of an ombre look. And there's blues and greens and other colors. But I'm not going to demo in the ombre. I'm going to demo in all the same color because it's going to be clearer to you how I'm making the knots. So you have the wax cord, the board, size eight seed beads. They go on one by one. You can't use a needle to string them. You're just going to take the end of your piece of wax cord. And because it's waxed, you can get it to make a nice non frayed end, and you can just one by one string the beads. It's a little time consuming, but isn't anything that's worthwhile time consuming, right? All right. Then you're going to want a scissors or um, a snip. Uh, where's my little snip? So you're going to want your beadsmith um, snip that really will give you a clean cut on your wax cord. Um, T pins, or I just use long ball and quilting pins to hold my work. Then you're gonna need gold or silver jump rings, which are gonna be what you see at the end of the bracelet. So let's see that, and, and a clasp, a lobster clasp or something like that. So let's get started. Get these out of the way here for now. So here's the finished bracelets. This is one that's all in neutral. You can see it's very supple. I put a magnet clasp on mine. I just tend to like that nice and easy. Here's the one that's in the ombre. So I started with the light colors and over to the dark, the darkest brown. And there's instructions, there's tips inside the tutorial that will um, help you to do the ombre. But let's start with the neutral, okay? You're going to cut 
four chords and fold in the half to have eight chords, or you can have eight individual chords if you're doing all different colors. The tutorial tells you how long to cut the chords. Basically, each chord is twice as long as your finished bracelet needs to be. So I have short chords here just for purposes of demo. And here's where they're folded in half, where I folded four chords in half to get eight chords. And I'm gonna bring this through the jump ring. It's an open jump ring. So you wanna make sure that the opening, that the cord, the opening is at the top. It's not near where you're bringing the, the cord through. And what I'm starting to do for you here is to show you how to make how to tie off your ends to be the same at both. Let's see if I can get this in here. Forgot where my iPad camera was, sorry. So it's just a simple wrapping technique with a little trick to help to keep it from undoing or unknotting. So you have your ends together like this with the jump ring, making sure that the opening in the jump ring is not where your cords are. And you're gonna have a small like six inch piece of the wax cord that's gonna be your wrapping color. Have a short tail sticking up like this and make a loop and bring the long end back up this way. Now having a contrasting cord is important if you have looped ends so you know which one is gonna be your wrapping cord. So I have this like this, and now I'm just gonna take the long cord and I'm gonna wrap around and around making that nice coiled end. About a half an inch. Now I'm going to take, you take the long part and you bring it up through that loop that you left. Now take the tail, the little short tail, and then you're going to pull the end of the cord into the coil so that the little knot, the half hitch that you made when you pulled the long cord into the loop is now inside the coil and it just keeps it nice and tight and tidy. Then you're gonna snip off the tails of the wrap. One of the things I love about the wax cord is you can like mush it so that it stays. Okay, now you have your little loops here. Before you trim them, you can see that the jump ring is kind of loose inside those cords that we pulled through. So I'm going to pull on the cords coming down towards the bracelet to snug the loops over the jump ring. And you just pull them, whoops, pull them one by one, each side of the loop. Let's see if I can show you how they're you see how they're going in close to the, the jump ring? So you want all those loops to be pulled so you don't have any of this showing. So I'm just going in and I'm pulling and pulling on those loops until they're all nice and flush with the jump ring like that. Now you can trim these off. And that trick, by the way, where I showed you, make sure you don't cut any of your working cords here, just the little ends coming out. But that little wrapping the end is, comes in very handy when you're doing other projects in order to cover any kind of a closure. There you go. And you can trim that closer. But so there's your end and here's your working cords. I've pre-strung my beads just to be ahead of the game. Um, but you can do this one, one by one at each step. All right, make sure that your jump ring opening 
is not under those cords. And if it is, gently pull it around. So you can see here's the opening right there at the top. Now I'm going to pin that to my board. And it's just, whoops, it's just to hold it in place. There we go. So when you're working macrame, you have two kinds of cords in something basic like this. You have what's called a holding cord and the working cord. The holding cord is a, what the knots are going to be made around. So the first thing we're going to do is make our first row. Here's the bracelet. The first row of knots above the bead. The be row of beads is what we're going to do and we're going to make our first angle so that we do the zigzag. So I'm going to start with a cord from my right. That's going to be my first holding cord. And to give yourself something to pull against, you're going to take another pin and don't put it through the thread or the cord, but put it off to the side so you have something to pull the holding cord against. So that's the holding cord right there. Now you kind of want to take your other cords, your working cords, since you're just getting started, and from where the coil is, kind of spread them out a little bit. So they're, they look as unoverlapped as possible. So there's our cords. These are all gonna be our working cords for our first row. All right, now we're just gonna make what are called clove hitches. So I have my holding cord coming over like this. If you want, you can take the other cords and pull them into a notch at the bottom like this of your macrame board. The notches are very handy to keep other cords out of the way. So for this, to show you, you can see I have kind of a letter P formed here. I've brought my working cord, my holding cord over the working cords. Now I'm bringing my first working cord up and over the holding cord and down through the loop like this. And by holding the, the holding cord strong, I'm going to keep the angle as I continue making these knots. So that was half a clove hitch that I did. We're going to repeat it. Bring your working cord up over the holding cord and down through the loop you just made and then guide it with your finger to be right next to the first one. So that's your first clove hitch. And you can see it's really up close to um, the wrapped part. The next cord, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of leeway there so that I have the angle. Bring the cord up, bring your working cord up and over the holding cord back down through the loop and use your finger as you're, use this finger as you're pulling. Now I'm right-handed, so I am using my left hand to hold the holding cord and my right hand to do this. As someone who um, is a lefty, you're gonna have to learn to be a little ambidextrous with macrame but you could certainly have started this on the other side, except you're gonna be going back and forth. So, did I just do one? I think I just did one there. I'm gonna go back around and do the other one. I'm gonna work all the way across. Again, trying to keep my angle consistent. Bring your working cord up and over the holding cord down through the loop. That's a half a one. Remember each clove hitch, may you do this twice before moving on to the next cord. Keep doing it all the way across. You can see how having the pin here really helps give me something to hold on to, to pull the holding cord against. And we go all the way across. Mm -hmm. So, I am, Leslie Pope and I are both in Philadelphia, by the way. 
So it's kind of on the cooler side here, which is nice. I mean, it's not cool, but it's still summer. <laughs> All right. I'll make sure those hitches, you can see I have that nice angle. And I'll bring the last cord up and finish off my clove hitch. So now I have one row. Now I need to bring beads up. This is going the other way here. Look at this one. I'm going to bring the beads up and then we're going to make a second row of clove hitches underneath so that each row of beads is flanked by the macrame. And like I said, I pre-strung my beads. So I'm just going to bring a bead up and you can do this if you want. You can pre-string beads. And I just tied a little knot at the end. You're going to have a lot of more beads than this. But so on my first and second cords, I'm going to bring my beads up or string beads. Every time you start a row of beads, doesn't matter which direction you're going, you're going to bring two beads up. And I'll show you why. All right, so I have two beads up here. Now I'm going to move my holding cord pin. This becomes my next holding cord. You always, your holding cords are always going to go in pairs to flank the beads. So once again, I'm going to put the pin next to, in between the holding cord and what's going to be the first working cord. But you can see I put a bead on my holding cord this time. And that's because I want to have a little bead on the outside cords in this design. So that's why I string two because your first clove hitch is going to hold both of those two beads up. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to make that little P by bringing our new holding cord over the working cords and in order I'm going to bring the next working cord up and over the holding cord down through making that loop and guiding it up to the beads. And I'm going to do it again. It's important that you keep the holding cord taut. Otherwise, you're going to start doing this and you're going to be making your hitches incorrectly. They're not going to sit right. So you want to make sure that holding cord is pulled taut and you're going to finish the first clove hitch and snug it up there. Really against your pin that's holding your holding cord. All right. Let's bring the string a bead or bring the next bead up on the next working cord. Here's your holding cord again and you're going to keep that taut. There's the third bead. You kind of can't see a P there, but you're bringing your holding cord over your working cord. Bring your working cord up over the holding cord, down through the loop, and guide that first part of your hitch up to the others. And now you're going to repeat. You're going to bring your working cord from underneath the holding cord up over the holding cord down through the loop. And finish. And we're going to keep doing that all across. Bring another bead up with the next one. Push it up to the row. Your holding cord comes across the working cords. Bring your working cord up and over the holding cord, down through the loop, and bring your clove hitch, half a clove hitch, up to the bead. You can see I'm pushing with my finger. And do the same thing. I'm going to pick up a little speed now since we're just repeating. Now you want to keep that angle and keep nudging the beads so they don't overlap, so they stay nice and well behaved in that line. I'm on to my next cord. I'm going to bring my bead up. Holding cord over my working cord, working cord up over the holding cord, and back through the loop. 
put that into position and repeat to finish your clove hitch. There you go. I want to get to a point where I show you how we go in the other direction. So I brought my bead up, holding cord over my working cord, working cord up over the holding cord and back down through the loop. And you'll find that the wax cord feels a little sticky, but not so sticky that, um, I mean, it, it's easy to work with. And what the wax does is it really helps to keep the knots in place for macrame. There is not a lot of slipping and sliding when you use wax cord. And it's a nice gauge. I found that doesn't quite fit through size 11s, but eights and larger, it's fabulous. Okay, next bead up, working cord up over and down through the loop. And we're gonna complete that one. So you see how these are getting a little bunched up here. I'm gonna wanna mush them around until they stay nice in a line like that. Okay, we have our last working cord. And we're going to make that hitch. We bring it around. So we have beads showing at both ends. I'll take this out, try to give you guys a better view. You can see that, right? You can see how it comes across. Okay. Now to go back. We're going to want to leave the waves Let's see, where's that other one? Here it is. So we're in the same direction. <laughs> so this part here is what I call the wave, the little parts that are inside. I'm not stringing any beads up on these. I wanted to show the cords for this tutorial. But I have to show you that if you were feeling adventurous, and wanted more beads, you can string beads on those waves like this. And you're going to string them sequentially, allowing for them to graduate out. And then you'll follow the same thing. So you're not going to leave a bare naked cord. You're going to string beads. And that just brings this whole other level of interest. Um, it's a little time consuming to demo for you, but I definitely wanted to show you. All I did was string these one by one on the ends of my cord, and you can see it just adds a whole new dimension. So you are gonna be empowered after doing this basic waves bracelet to add beads. Now, I also didn't wanna add beads in this time because I'm using the ombre. I'm using all four colors of the cords. So I wanted to see the cords and didn't want to hide them underneath beads. But if you're doing something in one color, and you can see that when you do it in one color, the rows of clove hitch knots are all going to be that same color, and it's going to contrast with whatever bead you use. So there you go, a little design evolution for you guys in the waves. All right, let's get back to business. So we have our first angle here. Any questions so far that need to be answered? No, less. Okay, good. Not, not that you need to answer anyway. Okay, well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love the beads. Yeah, we love the beads. All right, so now we're gonna have, we're gonna bring our other angle back this way. And we're gonna do the same thing in reverse that we did here, leaving those little waves. I'm gonna take a pin. This is my first holding cord, the one that's coming out at the side here. And I'm gonna put my pin there. Now, remember I said when you start a row of beads, you wanna string the first two cords, including the holding cord. <clears throat> so I'm gonna bring a bead up. And I'm going to bring a bead up on what will be my first working cord. 
There we go. Now I'm gonna have that, make sure the beads are up against the form, the last clove hitch. I have my holding cord going down to the right this time. You can see when I was talking to people who were lefties that really to righties and lefties, you need to be able to work with both your hands for this. So now I have the holding cord in my right hand and I want to visually match the angle, but leave enough cord here to make those nice little waves. So the first one's pretty easy. I'm gonna bring my holding cord over my working cord, bring my working cord up over the holding cord and down through the little loop and push with my finger to get the clove hitch right up against those two beads. And the pin will be kind of in between the beads. Now I'm gonna finish my clove hitch. I still have my holding cord, bring my working cord up over it, down through the loop, pulling on my holding cord and nudging it with my finger. Oh, you know what I did? I put the beads on too soon. All right, here's a good, here's a good lesson. The beads, you always make the row of clove hitches first. So I'm gonna take this out. My bad, I'm just so excited about using beads. <laughs> if you do that, carefully undo your knots, very carefully, don't pierce the thread. There we go. All right. So also, Leslie, your instructions actually have you starting off from the left side and going down towards the right versus going from the right side towards the left. Oh, really? Oh, I started on the other side? Yeah, okay. although it, it ultimately, ultimately does not matter. So, it doesn't. But, it doesn't. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you Someone, for clarifying that. Somebody, somebody, somebody that mentioned out. that. Yeah, yeah. All right. So. so we have this first one. Let's backtrack then. We're just going to make a row of clove hitches like we did at the very beginning because each row of beads has clove hitches above it and below it. So I'm gonna take my pin and put it in between the first and second cords. This is my holding cord, no beads yet. We're just gonna make a row of hitches. So I have my holding cord coming over my first working cord, bring the working cord up and over the holding cord down through that loop. And that's your first half of a clove hitch. You're gonna bring your working cord up. It's kind of like a number four, like a backwards tape. Bring it up over the holding cord through the loop. Okay, and remember, we're gonna to try to keep this angle with these being a little loose. So the next one, I'm gonna do the same thing bring my holding cord over, bring my working cord up, over and through. And I'm gonna leave a little bit of space and then I'm gonna finish off that clove hitch. The third one, again, holding cord over working cord, working cord up over holding cord and back down around through the loop. Don't pull it real tight though. Give it, give it, a, it's just starting to arc a little bit. So don't pull on your half a clove hitch too tightly yet. And then when you finish your clove, you can snug those up. And we're gonna keep working across. Make sure you're always making your knots around the holding cord. By pulling that holding cord tight so you don't get confused and we're going to leave this a little bit looser than the one before it. So we're going to have that arch, nice arch forming. We're going to keep doing it. It really starts to show when you have the outer ones. Half a hitch up over the holding cord, back down through. 
Let me pull that tight. There, it's starting to get a nice little wave. And we'll finish this row off and start with the beads in between them. All right. First half a hitch. And you see how I'm using the finger of the hand that's holding the holding cord to help to nudge those. Because you want to have that nice snug holding cord there. Gentle waves. Okay. All right, there's our the top flanking row for the next row of beads. Now I'm going to bring the beads up. Now you always bring two holding cords over to the same direction, so don't be tempted to do this. That's a different technique. We're going to take the next cord in line on the left, and we're going to bring up we're starting the row of beads now, so we're going to bring up a bead on that, two beads and a bead on the next one. So we have two beads up by the row. All right, we're gonna move our holding pin to be in between the next two cords. Now this is our holding cord and you wanna make sure those beads stay. Let's see if I can get you a closer look here. You see how they're up, the pin sort of in in between the beads and my holding cord that that's the one that's moving is pulling against that pin. So I have my holding cord over my working cords and I'm gonna take the next one with the bead already pulled up, bringing it up and over the holding cord, down through the little loop. Make sure you're pulling that holding cord tight and you're gonna nudge that first part of the clove hitch up to the beads. Then you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna bring your working cord up over your holding cord, down around and through the loop, pull that holding cord nice and taut so that those first two beads are up there nice in line. Now we're gonna bring a bead up or string a bead on the next working cord bring it up to that first row of clove hitches. Your holding cord is over your working cord. If your pin starts to bend like that, make just tilt it out to give yourself something to tug on. So I have my third bead. My working cord is underneath my holding cord. I'm gonna bring it up and over, down and through the loop, pulling my holding cord taut and parallel, don't bring an angle, hold it parallel to the row before it and nudge that bead into place and then finish your clove hitch by bringing your working cord again up and over the holding cord and against it. So I'm gonna pick up speed now for my finish this row. Next bead up holding cord over working cord, working cord up and over and through the loop, half a clove hitch, up and over again, through the loop, there we go. Now we're gonna keep doing this and you pretty much repeat this from the top, like I showed you making the, the waves in between and obviously the angle's gonna go the other way next time. After each row, when you do this, you can readjust to spread these out and make sure that they're nice and positioned. So I'll just finish this one row. And then I'm gonna show you how to finish off the other end. We have about 20 minutes left. So I wanna make sure to get that in for you guys. Okay, half a clove hitch, up and over and through your holding cord. And the last one. All right. Just want to give you a compliment from Paula McGee. 
She says, I love how you explain this. I'm new to macrame. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we're all new at something sometime, right? Okay, now what I would do is repeat to go back the other way, stringing the clove hitches first and then the other beads. So you're gonna get this kind of a look. And I want you to see too that the, on the back, the clove hitches, it's all like flat. The clove hitches give you these nice kind of rounded cables. And you can see how obviously if you pull it, you're gonna pull the waves out, but um, when you wear it, it just has this nice wavy look. So here we are, we've done our bracelet. Let me take this off. You want to do your waves as long as you need for a bracelet while allowing for the space that's going to be between the jump rings for the clasp. So you're going to want to maybe keep trying it on and seeing how much more you have to do. I have a little tiny wrist, but to size it and and give yourself enough room to, um, to finish this off at a good size. All right, so I didn't quite finish this, but I wanna show you how you're gonna finish your, your bracelet here. All right, so if this is the last, I think I didn't have another one, did I? No. To finish off the other side, to match the first one, you're gonna do exactly the same thing. You're gonna take the ends, I'm gonna trim these a little shorter with my snippers. Didn't have my weaves this morning. There we go. All right, that probably totally aged me by using that reference. <laughs> I didn't have my weedies. Okay. So we have, you have the ends of your bracelet here and we're gonna take another jump ring and we're gonna bring the ends. Now we don't have folds this time, but it's the same principle. You're gonna bring the ends through your jump ring. Making sure, uh, I can turn it around. You wanna make sure that the opening to the jump rings, where are you? There it is, are not inside what you're doing because the cords can pull right through. So you wanna make sure that the opening to the jump ring is facing away and you're gonna even out your cords and bring them back over like this. Then you're gonna take another cord, um, I'll cut myself another like six inch piece of cord here. I'll use a different color so you can see. So I have my second piece of cord, six to eight inches, just whatever. Uh, you don't want to use too short a piece. It's better to have a long piece. All right. And you're gonna kind of eyeball to make it the same distance from the first row to the last row. Now you're gonna have a short tail sticking up and a loop and a long tail. The long tail wraps around the layers that you just overlapped. You can pull it nice and snug. And as I showed you earlier, you want to make sure, whoops, you want to make sure that you have a long enough little wrapped area to pull your, your cord through. Okay, so I got turned around. There we go. So there's the loop. Here's the wrapped part wrapping around. Now I'm going to pull this 
what was the long tail up through the loop and then take the short tail and pull it so that that loop pulls the end of your wrapping inside the wrapping. Don't pull it all the way through. You just need a little tug and you can see actually when you look at it close up, you'll be able to see a bump where that little hitch is inside. Okay. Now you're gonna take each of your ends and you're gonna pull them one by one. So the loops around the jump ring are pulled snug, making sure before you do it that the opening to your jump ring is not in there. Okay. So let's see if I can hold this so you can see this, these loops tightening up. I think you can see them now as I pull each end. They pull nice and snug against the jump ring. There we go. And you're gonna just pull each one. So everything's nice and close and snug. And now you can trim your ends, including your working threads. You all have a saw at it with my scissors. You don't have to cut them all at once. And you're gonna trim your ends. Don't trim your work. Make sure you're only getting your ends. There we go. There we go. And now you have an end that matches your other end in technique. You can go back and, you know, snip any little ends that you don't get. But now you have two wrapped ends that match. Because I had somebody say, why don't I just sort of knot my threads through the jump ring and something called a lark's head? This is why, so that they look alike. So there you go. That's the waves. If you get one of these really cool combo cards, you can do it by aligning the colors. And feeling ambitious, you can also add beads. So we have a couple of questions. Okay, I'm ready. So the, the first question is from Sandy. She says, do you have a suggestion for alternate cords to use with this project? Sure, macrame can be done with a lot of things. And what you need to figure out is how um, substantial you want your bracelet. So if you wanna keep something a little more um, slim like this, you can use Eslon. Um, you want something that's not gonna be real, real stretchy. So I wouldn't advise like some of the other knitting yarns and things, but you can use floss. I've used floss for really micro, micro macrame. Um, did that answer your question? And if you're gonna use beads, obviously you wanna choose a cord that's gonna fit the beads. All right, second question is from Ellen Nakamura. She says, can this project be expanded to a necklace? If so, how much extra cord will be needed? Okay, well, you're gonna need two and a half times the length. Each cord has to be two and a half times the length that you're gonna want your necklace and depending on the necklace. So if you wanted something like, um, like as a strap, for a necklace, you're going to want to adjust your cord length for that. Um, I'm not sure what kind of a necklace you're thinking of. Obviously, something like a choker or something would be very cool and easy to make. You just make it longer. So again, the length, your finish length, each strand has to be two and a half times what your finished piece is going to be. And you will end up with, with strands that are going to be shorter and longer, depending on how you're working your holding cords. The holding cords are going to use up more, but I don't think I have one as an example to show you. But I hope that answered your question, Ellen. And so 
everyone likes your blue beaded one. So you might have to uh, <laughs> turn that into a class, Leslie. Everybody really likes that I one. I knew they would. And I thought <laughs> it would take too long to demo, but you guys, if you can do this from what I just showed you, all you have to do is string beads instead of leaving the waves open. You string beads there. Now, one thing I will tell you, I found that it wasn't just one bead, two beads, three beads, four beads, five beads as I graduated this because the beads, even though they're all size eights, are slightly different sizes. <clears throat> the black beads, which are matte, are a little smaller in their profile than the silver ones, which are galvanized. So I have one bead, two bead, one silver bead, two black beads, three silver beads, five black beads. And then I just, what I did to figure this out is I just pulled them up and saw when I did the first one, how many to leave to give it a little bit of an arch. <clears throat> and it really does hold the waves when you have the beads, doesn't it? So sorry if I should have done this one instead of the other one. You can never tell. Right? Um, we have another question. To make okay. a thinner bracelet, <clears throat> uh, do the cord, do you need to have odd numbers of cords or even numbers of cords? Doesn't matter. It's all determined um, by how wide you want to make the bracelet. And everyone loves your rings. Thank you. <laughs> I made them and, to match. I made them to match the brown bracelet. That was the uh, primary demo. <laughs> uh -huh. and, no, I actually okay. have them already made. <laughs> and we still have a few people still. Please do a, do a second class with the with the beads. Okay. Uh, <laughs> All right. I'm just noting what people are saying. I'm not. <laughs> Excuse me, my allergies are starting to kick in. <clears throat> I would love to, you guys. So I will talk to the powers that be about doing that as another macrame necklace. In the meantime, <clears throat> remember, this has all been recorded and you can find it on the Michael's YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much for joining me with Leslie Pope. Uh, team Leslie from the Beadsmith and Nate, thank you for your tech support there. You can go back and watch this at your leisure and remember, you can find these and other quality Beadsmith beads tools and supplies at Michael's. All right, everybody stay safe. We're not through this yet. Enjoy the rest of your summer. I should be back in September. So watch for the announcement i'll i'll uh see what i can do about doing this other one with the beads for you next time <laughs> okay thanks bye happy beating